Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this utility I've created to create pegboards and holes on demand. So the concept behind this, maybe if I jump over and I share this, uh, is to be able to import uh, pegboards like this. And this is actually what you saw in the OpenSCAD code a moment ago, is a, basically a 90 by 90 uh, millimeter piece of pegboard that I've imported into Tinkercad to use for this model that I'm creating. And I wanted an easy way to do that. So I whipped this up in Tinkercad, or sorry, I actually whipped it up in OpenSCAD. Uh, too many CADs here. And the idea behind this uh, is you can enter different uh, parameters. So you can go uh, 120 by 90 and create different um, size pegboards. Now the other piece that I added is this piece down here called type and you notice for Thingiverse I've set it up as either being a 0 or 1. So the piece is, is if I enter a 0 here and rerun it I get pegs. So now the idea is, is I can import these pegs into Tinkercad or another application, turn them into holes and punch out holes into the object uh, that I'm working on that match pegboard holes. And again, as you can see here, I've got a number of parameters that set the size and uh, size of the holes, the offset of the holes, so the height of the pegs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, all pretty much run of the mill stuff. So uh, all goodness, I think, for creating uh, quick models. And so I'm going to go back to the pegboard here for a second. Now I have set this up, as you can see, for Thingiverse Customizer. And, but if we go back, I'm having a bit of issues with Thingiverse Customizer because if I go into the Customizer itself, the situation I get is basically just a blank pad. And this is one of the things I wanted to show you guys before we jump back into the code for a second. Because now as I move this over to zero for the peg, notice I get this error over here. So I'm really not sure what this error is, but I'm thinking it has to do with the dual if statements that make this code work. So if we go back to uh, OpenSCAD, get my CADs right here, uh, one of the things you'll notice is that I have two if statements. So if type equals one and if type equals two. So this one creates the union components and this one down here creates the differential components. And you can see if it's set to zero, I get the pegs. If it's set to one, I get the board. Now, uh, this is the piece I think that's happening because while the board is created here, the holes of the board, which you see over here, are created in the second if statement. And I don't think the second if statement is actually ever being run for some reason it's stopping at the first uh, statement. And when I default it to zero, it's doing the else, activating the else, and obviously it's having some problem with doing that. So I'm really not sure why. So if you guys out there know why this might be having a problem in Tinkercad with these multiple ifs, let me know. I have put other projects out there, I believe, with multiple ifs, I believe. Um, so I'm, again, I'm not sure. But anyways, jumping back to this, I'll have the code for this out on, on the OpenSCAD website. So if you want to borrow it, go ahead. Uh, there is some medium mind-bending logic in setting this all up uh, up here. So you might want to take a look at that. I'm not going to go into all the detail, but you can get in and see board, board height minus hole offset, which is really difficult because, again, this had to be parametric in the fact I had to be able to deal with different distance offsets between holes, have uniform sides both here and here. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a little bit of thinking to go into creating all the math to do this uh, to make it happen in a um, sort of parametric way. So definitely worth taking a look at. Um, and again, I think the use of these dual if statements is kind of kind of neat. Uh, how I can come up with both either a hole or board for this. Now, the other piece that I kind of want to share is, so I've, I've already done several projects, and you'll see this over on the DIY 3D Tech channel uh, probably in a week or so. Uh, long story short, this is an air can holder for a pegboard. And again, I modeled this up using this module as a basis. Now, uh, I did it, you know, I this is something I wanted to do rather quick. So I just modeled it uh, inside the code of this rather than calling it externally. Uh, but one of my uh, real, you know, goals, I shouldn't know if it's really a goal or not, but one of my um, 
uh, you know, pieces of thinking here with this is, again, I can call this externally to add this uh, piece to, uh, you know, a different um, application, if you will. So I could do this without all this uh, gyration in here of having this text. And this is one of the neat pieces about this. So if you want to build something up, I think this would be a handy module to have. Now, I do want to do you want to call a couple things out so this isn't probably the cleanest it can be you notice the origin is here rather than in the center of the board i would have preferred it to be there but because it was easier to do it this way and the fact i'm going to probably call this externally as a module um, you know meant i really didn't care so much because i'm going to translate it anyway uh in in whatever product i'm using it in general so um you know, again, when you look at this, keep this in mind because it was just easier to start at the origin and work my way out than attempting to try to center everything. Because again, this is going to to, to center it would mean I would have to be able to account for mathematically all the whole separations, board sizes, and things like that. Uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, I invested enough time in this. I didn't feel like going uh, through that route. So uh, if you have any comments on this, hey, hit me up below or, or suggestions. I don't think this is, again, the cleanest code. It is functional. It does work. Uh, I've made a number of uh, boards already for this. And again, you can see the result. I'm, and this one, I'm not going to print anything out because it's sort of more of a utility. Uh, but you can check it out on the uh, DIY 3D Tech main channel. We'll be having a number of projects featuring components uh, created by this in there. So again, I'll have this out on the website. Uh, hopefully you find found this useful. Hopefully you find some of the tips and tricks that I've shared in this with the dual if statements to be able to create a board or pegs, vice versa. Uh, also the concept of creating, you know, having utility that creates a subpart that can be imported into a high level design program like Tinkercad, I think is uh, pretty cool and handy. And the fact, again, to be able to take, you know, the pegs as holes and punch it out into uh, an object, I think is pretty neat too. So if you found this neat also, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit me up in the comments below and also check out DIY3dtech.com. Cheers.